Um, let's have a question here, and then we'll go back farther in the room and take a few more. So you and then you. Yeah. Go ahead. You, you first. Two, sorry. Okay. Um, first question, you mentioned that uh, if you don't take a chance on yourself, no venture capitalist or angel is going to take a chance on you. So if you don't quit your job, you probably won't get any money. Um, my question is in regards to a lot of immigrant students here, because I'm a Canadian, and I wanted to leave my job, but I'm bound by my H-1B. How did you manage to start on your own? Did you wait for your citizenship? or And how do you think that immigrant students should take on that challenge? So I became senior in 1975. So yeah, long before I became an entrepreneur in 1981, 82. Yeah, so th I didn't suffer, had that problem. And uh, yeah, yeah, so l l let me talk about yeah, getting a chance on you a little bit more. So the entrepreneurial journey is a very lonely journey. So it's a very lonely <laughs> journey. And I, yeah, I, I told the story, uh, no a mother, especially Indian mothers, will say, son, daughter, become an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, become a doctor, become an engineer, you know, a bit, you know, become you know, a professional of some kind, right? There's the emphasis on you know, settle down, become responsible, you're not a child anymore. There's a huge pressure, you know, definitely in the Indian families, you know, to become responsible, you know, settle down. You know, and uh, so there's no encouragement whatsoever in the families. Yeah, you know, yeah, and uh, to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, as you start to think of becoming an entrepreneur, your friends will abandon you because you're not, not fun anymore. You're always you know, talking about your business, you're always talking about your idea, you're always working, you have no time for the movies, you have no time for the football, you have no time to you know, have a drink. You, your friend you know, will abandon you. Yeah, you know, and I should have also mentioned the odds of becoming successful entrepreneurs are no more than 2%. So very poor arts, very little encouragement. You know, and, and opportunity cost sometimes is very, very high. You know, you're making a you know, huge amount of money, you have to give up all that. So, so, so here's the issue, right? Uh, why do people do it? Why do people do it? You know, I tell people, if there's an entrepreneurial gene, and I believe it is, but it's very randomly distributed. You don't get it from your parents. You know, the fact that your parents were not entrepreneurs doesn't mean that you won't you know, succeed as an entrepreneur. And, you know, and it's also true vice versa. So who's going to succeed as an entrepreneur is anybody's bet. And, and, and whose bet it should be? Your own. If you don't give yourself a chance to you know, try your hand at entrepreneurship, nobody else will, right? So, so, so I tell people that, yeah, you have to give yourself a shot. You have, yeah, and you, once you convince yourself you have as much of a chance as any, anybody else, yeah, then why not? Why not give yourself a chance? So, I, you know, so it has to be something which has to be in, innate. You know, something which you have to, uh, fire has to come from inside. You know, because you know, nobody from outside is going to do it to you, you know, or inspire you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, people can inspire you, but still have to you know, take that first step. And uh, so, so what happens is, uh, you know, places like Thai, you know, and, and these groups, you know, you know, listening to a person like me, you know, who sounds you know, a little bit silly, you know, has a you know, pretty accent, and still was able to make it. Then, and then you have to answer you know, to yourself, why not me? Why, what's holding me back? Right? So immigration? It's, hmm? immigration? Oh, yeah, immigration, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, so I'll tell you, an entrepreneur, recently. He, had, he was in exactly the same position. He became entrepreneur. He was totally illegal. I, I was an investor in his company. Uh, I did, discovered he came and asked me, hey, I, he needs to write his letters. There was a, there was a class in the immigration law you know, that you know, it separately gifted people and entrepreneurs you know, get some special dispensation. You know, I had to write the letter for him. But he was very good, uh, but, uh, you know, but we had invested in his company. And you know, recently he told me that he did get his dream chart. You know, so it didn't stop him. You know, he took the risk. You know, and I, did, you know, I wouldn't have invested if I knew you know, that he was illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he was a very good entrepreneur. And, and uh, you know, 
and you know, he did get his visa. So I, I, I think uh, you can find 20 reasons why you can do it. You know, I, I tell people to find that one reason that why you can do it. You know, so I mean, it's very easy to talk yourself out of it. I think we had a question right here. Why don't you tell us who you are? Peter Davidson, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, other than the gentleman who made you so mad and made you be the entrepreneur, yeah. what other person has been super influential in your path and why? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, hate to say I was, uh, I was very much self motivated, self driven person in my life. You know, I had uh, speech impairments as a child, and that made me very shy as a person. And I went to a lot of speech therapy to improve my you know, speech after I made my money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I was very shy, but super confident in my abilities as a, as an individual. As, as a as a you know, I had gotten into IITs, you know, which you know, where you know, chance of getting into IITs are like less than one percent. You know, you know, and uh, yeah. So you know, I yeah, every step of the way, yeah, you know, I had you know, been totally on my own. And uh, David Jackson inspired me, you know, only by, by you know, you know finding out my own limitations, that I was being held back by myself, you know, not by giving me any positive, you know, you know for your sight. I, I said, if David can do it, why not me? You know. So find your David. Yeah, find your David. We got to have time for one or two more questions. Yeah, uh, I just want to ask uh, that, How did you start that excellent story? I think everyone wants to probably hear that your first venture excellent story. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you tell us that story? The first venture that... that, that yeah, my own startup. So 1981 was uh, the year IBM PC was introduced. You know, you know, PC is only 31 years old, 30, oh, 33 years old now. September of 1981 was the year IBM PC was introduced. And you know, some man unhappy, you know, had a job. You know, David Jackson has become an entrepreneur. IBM PC gets introduced. <laughs> you know, and I looked at it and said, hmm. This whole paradigm of computing is about to change. You know, if there's a computer on the desktop, which is going to replace the old terminal, then it has to tie into the computers that people already have, businesses already have. <coughs> so that means, you know, you know people are going to need, need networking. And, uh, and so, you know, yeah, maybe something I should uh, think about you know, doing. I had no experience in networking. I was not a communication engineer. But it thought, you know, started to, you know, yeah, what uh, it's magic in my head. While I'm thinking about this thing, you know, this consortium of three companies, IBM, uh, not IBM, Digital, Intel, and Xerox, you know, announced a specification for a future networking protocol called Ethernet. You know, they published a book called Blue Book, saying that, A, we have tested this, you know, you know, mathematically, and we have tested it in the lab, you know, that this protocol should uh, produce you know, stable, reliable networks. You know. And by the way, we'll have chips available in three to five years to implement these protocols. And uh, yeah, I'm already thinking about networking. I said, oh, maybe I should go look at this blue book. I, so I went yeah, and got the specification and started to thumb through it. And, uh, and pretty soon I realized, hey, uh, this, these are pretty simple protocols. I can implement them using off the shelf chips uh, right now. And uh, I got, yeah, just enamored with the idea of, you know, so I you know, went and talked to a of my friends and I said, I can implement you know, these you know, things you know, using off the shelf chips. And one of my friends says, hey, I can write software drivers you know, if you write this you know, board. So two of us uh, quit our jobs right away. You know, and we had the idea and I you know, used our savings to you know, build three boards you know, to, you know, Build the, uh, you, know, you need three to make a network. You know, two is just a point to point. And uh, within you know, six to eight weeks, you know, we had three working uh, you know, you know, you know, prototypes of those boards. And uh, you know, so we knew uh, if we can make it happen you know, in the larger numbers, you know, we have three to five year jump on, on, on potential competition because you know, that's, you know, they're going to wait for the chips to happen. And so we very quickly got. Yeah, drained and yeah, started to yeah, 
you know, uh, data design perfected for uh, multiple machines that you know, which were you know, being you know, used IBM PC, digital machines, you know, Unix machines of various types. And uh, so within a few uh, months, we had working boards and we had customers looking at our boards and 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 getting and very impressed. That's when we went and talked to John Barsh. Mm -hmm. so, so he liked the idea of what we were doing. He was able to talk to the customers. They loved what we were doing. You know, you know, you know, but he had traveled you know, for a few minutes anyway, you know, giving money to the Indian entrepreneurs. But, but he was able to overturn that because he saw the, you know, the smart idea, he saw the customers were happy, and he says maybe it's time to try one, right? You know, so you know, you know, we, we ended up you know, doing, you know, we, you know, so I tell people that you know, you know, when you hear Al Gore telling you that you know, he invented Ethernet, or the internet, you know, he's lying because I did that. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah because the, the first, you know, first million notes on the internet were supplied by us. You know, but if, you know, million, you know, we, we had supplied more than a million notes before somebody else came up with boards. You know. So you know, the internet was built on our, you know, our board and our, our hardware and our software. You know, the word internet you know, didn't come up around till about 93, 94. And we had our networking stuff you know, being sold in 83. Let's have one more question. Right here. Susie, go. You mentioned that these two uh, opportunities that you had passed on investing, and is there, are there specific reasons why you did not invest in them that you mentioned? No, I mean, if I, I, I told you I talked to several thousand entrepreneurs. <laughs> I did only 54 investments. I, I can mention to you many good opportunities I passed on. If I was uh, only a little bit smarter than I am, <laughs> I, I would have done really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, see, this is the problem. You know, it's a very high risk. You know, there's a subjective, you know, thing that you're doing. How you feel on a given day. Yeah, you know, when you meet with an entrepreneur. You know, yeah. There are a lot of other factors come into play. You're pissed off at something because something went totally wrong, and this entrepreneur's idea is now, yeah, you know, even though it's very impressive, yeah, you know, it doesn't get the full, yeah, you know, attention, right? And and that you know, one of the problems is that we all get rooted in our past. Our projection of the future is based upon our past experience. So I couldn't think of an investment in a company which wasn't going to be financially viable anytime soon, or had no prospect of being financially viable hardware, right? So, you know, so I, you know, I live and learn, you know, and you know, I try to, you know, you know, you know, you know stay, you know, and catch up with the dam. But this is a very fast moving you know, you know, ship. And uh, it's, it's a struggle to stay up you know, with the team. Yeah. Well, we could probably talk for all night. But uh, on behalf of uh, the, our team at the Business Journal, and, and uh, we hope you're getting all of our communications at the Business Journal, our emails in the afternoon and in the morning. And it's been a pleasure for me to be here to, to moderate this discussion. Can we have a big hand for Dr. Reference?